summer, that means it's especially important to keep your body hydrated. But does that mean you still need to chug eight glasses of water every day? Well, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore says not necessarily. Our relentless triple digit heat is draining. It can quickly take a toll on our bodies, so it's critical to stay hydrated. Dehydration can increase your risk of dangerous heat stroke and chronic dehydration can accelerate the aging process. So is following the old eight glasses of water a day the way to go? Keeping properly hydrated doesn't mean measuring and downing water all day long. Everybody is different and everybody has different fluid needs. Consumer Reports' Trisha Calvo says hydration doesn't mean just water. Seltzer, milk, fruit juice, even coffee and tea get fluids into the body. What about drinks and powders with claims they're ultra hydrating? They often contain electrolytes, so they may be beneficial for athletes who sweat a lot. But they often also have sugar and artificial flavors. So for average exercisers, water is plenty. And for every pound you lose during exercise, a good rule is to drink 16 to 24 ounces of fluid afterward. There are other ways to get your fluid intake. Almost everything you eat has some water content. In fact, this peach has about five ounces of water in it. Fruits and veggies are the best water replacers. Take watermelon. One small wedge has seven ounces of water. One cup of cucumber has four ounces. Bottom line though, it's important to pay attention to your body. Look for symptoms of fatigue, wooziness, headaches and cramps. Heat exhaustion requires a cool down and rehydration. But if someone is suffering heat stroke, call 911. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Hey, I misspoke earlier. I said I saw Randy Meisner with the Eagles. I actually saw Timothy B. B. Schmidt. Entirely different guy. Just wanted to clarify. Right now, 442, 78 degrees. All eyes are on the Mega Millions this morning. Up next, what past winners are saying about choosing those lucky numbers. All right, he's known for his work as a civil rights activist. Starting this spring, the Alamo College's is district is honoring Cesar Chavez with his birthday as an official holiday. Coming up, why this move is so important and why it might be key to something more. Welcome back. It's 445. Another lottery jackpot is approaching $1 billion. ABC's DeMarco Morgan has the details in today's GMA First Look. And this morning's GMA First Look. I know the odds are not my favor, but, you know, someone's got to win, so why not me? Just one week after someone in California hit it big with that $1.08 billion Powerball cash prize, all eyes are on the Mega Millions this morning. The main prize is currently the fifth largest amount in Mega Millions history at a whopping $910 million with a cash out of about $450 million. Well, a couple of years ago, the Mega Millions Consortium, as, as well as the Powerball, um, team really changed the matrix of the jackpots so that they would grow at a faster rate to larger amounts. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll be talking to past jackpot winners about what it was like to win big and getting their advice to future lucky winners. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, a new paid holiday next year for the Alamo Colleges District. It'll far fall on March 31st, the birthday of the late Cesar Chavez. The city of San Antonio did the same last year to honor the iconic leader of the United Farm Workers. Jesse Degollado talks to one of the leaders behind Cesar Chavez Day. These students enrolling for the fall at San Antonio College will be among the first come this spring to have a new holiday, honoring one of the founders of the United Farm Workers, the late Cesar Chavez. The chairman of the Cesar E. Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation, Ernest Martinez, says the new holiday helps to further its mission. No better way to do that than to have a holiday uh, at an in educational institution like Alamo College's district. For Martinez, helping to lead the charge was personal. Chavez and his father, labor leader and civil rights advocate Jaime Martinez, were close friends. Those I spoke to here at San Antonio College told me the unanimous vote by their board of trustees says a lot. We're giving the representation that's needed for the, the things that Cesar Chavez had uh, fought for. For Daniel Sustaita, a longtime employee, it's about more than getting a paid holiday. 
For me, it's a recognition of Hispanic heritage, really. Honoring a man like Cesar Chavez with a holiday for us is a great accomplishment. An iconic figure whose fight for farm workers is well known. I'm sure it hit close to home. Martinez says he saw that before they took the vote. This is testimony after testimony after testimony of trustees with their personal connection. They say the holiday starting next year, marking Cesar Chavez's birthday on March 31st, will serve to inspire and motivate. This holiday is a catapult for things to come. Not only does Martinez want to see every educational institution in San Antonio do the same. It's time for other cities to start mobilizing and thinking about a national holiday for Cesar Chavez. A lot of work ahead, but as Cesar says, si se puede, right? Let's look out there with Transguide. It appears that the accident that we had reported earlier at Highway 90 at Couples, it looks like it cleared up. It is just in the last uh, few minutes. Uh, but Stephen Cavazos is joining us in just about uh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, good news for a Friday morning. Mm -hmm. All right, we were talking about the Eagles because we've been ever since we, the story about it. Um, they got kind of their start thanks to Linda Ronstadt. I was I reading I Don Henley and Glenn Fry played in her band way back when, and then they went on from there. So it's a great documentary yeah. if you haven't seen it about yeah. the, the Eagles. It's amazing. On Netflix or HBO? Um, I don't know where I saw it. It's it's been a little while, but it's okay. it's really good. Really behind the scenes. Good. Okay, what else can we talk about besides hot temperatures? Uh, right? We could talk about the Bee Gees documentary as well. Oh yes, that, <laughs> that's a good one too. I need to see it. It looks good. Uh, because the uh, it, it's interesting where they get the opening beat to Jive Talking. Yeah. Where they got that. That is interesting. Yeah. Okay, good tease. <laughs> sir, yeah, sir, it, it's one of those that's like, no kidding. So yeah, I need to watch that. All right. What else can we talk about besides the, the hot weather? Uh, this is the thermometer out there at uh, the south side of Calaveras Lake. Now that one reads 110. Obviously, it looks like it's a little bit in the uh, direct sun, but everywhere it is hot out there. And uh, that's the other thing we keep emphasizing. If you're in the direct sun, it feels even hotter than obviously just the, the air temperature. So you really, really got to take it easy. You've got clear skies right now. And the humidity dew point temperatures, at least here in town, are actually up just a couple of notches. And that does make a lot of difference when you go from, say, 71 to 73 for the dew point with these hotter temperatures out there. It uh, you, you notice it when you step outside, but it is down a little bit lower out in portions of the uh, hill country. Of course, we will see the humidity drop down later on this afternoon and then we'll continue to go through the cycle. So at least that's the one thing that we are the, 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 the plus side to all of this is we do have the lower humidity in the afternoon. We'll see a few clouds developing this morning. Of course, we make it up through the 80s, just about the same temperature profile as we had yesterday and going for a high temperature of 100. No, yesterday, Justin was talking about 99. I think it's going to be really, really it's going to be a close uh, close call as far as hitting 100 today. And the reason for that is we have we've been talking about how we were getting this little wave coming in here out of the Gulf of Mexico, which, well, first of all, it's not going to do anything as far as anything noticeable in regards to any rain, uh, really any cloud cover. But it is having somewhat of a small effect in the upper levels of the atmosphere as far as um, how much heat we can get out there. Basically what that translation is, this may actually keep us at say 99 instead of 100 as this little wave moves on through. But again, that's kind of kind of splitting hairs. It's just a matter of uh, what's going to go down in the record books. The high remains in place. And again, that wave stays too far to the south. There's no moisture for it to work with. So that's why anything you know on the certain it's not going to really do that much uh, as far as the uh, high pressure it is going to remain in place and as a matter of fact kind of move on in here starting sunday into the first part of next week and actually heat things up a little bit the only hope being uh by late in the week as this kind of sets up in a position to hopefully give us a little more of a flow coming in here off of the uh, the gulf of mexico which maybe you get a little bit of a disturbance or you know, some sea breeze showers because other than that, it stays hot. So again, kind of a close call as far as a photo finish, if you will, hitting 100 today. So hair and dust is out there. That's going to stick around through uh, tomorrow and then start to get on out of here as we go into the latter part of the weekend. 102 Sunday, 103s. Monday and Tuesday to finish up July, start off August on kind of an infamous note and 
low hundreds in through the basically first week of August. Well, we're going to have to do activities, you know, outdoor activities early in the morning or late in the evening. I, mm -hmm. I was up late yesterday. I was like, wow, it's actually nice, you know. <laughs> what time <laughs> in the evening was that? It was 8.30. 8.30 last night. <laughs> you know, when we down, should be asleep. We yeah. dropped a little bit below 100. Sure. But, mm -hmm. uh, and then, again, as you saw in that graphic, there's nothing out there as far as rain even. Okay, thank yep. you, Mike. Keep us posted. I know you will. 453, 78 degrees. Up next, Jamie Lee Curtis talks about her role in the new Haunted Mansion movie and her memories about the ride at Disney. Disney's The Haunted Mansion hits theaters and Madonna is feeling better. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> no! Oh, come on! One of Disneyland's most popular rides hits the big screen this weekend. Haunted Mansion, now a movie. Jamie Lee Curtis plays Madame Leota in the film, a medium trapped in her crystal ball. And Curtis tells us growing up in Southern California and going to Disneyland dozens of times as a child, the Haunted Mansion was always her favorite ride. The Haunted Mansion was the ride you ran to. You ran to it. You mm -hmm. would run through that park to get in line for the Haunted Mansion right when the gates opened. Haunted Mansion looking at a $30 million opening this weekend, but that won't be enough to take down Barbie or Oppenheimer. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. New streaming this weekend, the Beanie Baby craze of the 90s is dramatized in Apple TV Plus's The Beanie Bubble, starring Zach Galifianakis, Elizabeth Banks, and Sarah Snook. While on Netflix, John Cena teams up with Jackie Chan for the action comedy Hidden Strike. Madonna feeling better while celebrating a big anniversary. Her debut album was released 40 years ago Thursday. And to mark the occasion, she posted a video on Instagram of her dancing to her song Lucky Star, writing that to be able to move her body and dance just a little bit makes her feel like the luckiest star in the world. The singer was hospitalized a month ago for a serious bacterial infection. And Glorilla with a birthday today, the Tomorrow rapper turning 24. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now is 457 and 78 degrees for now. Former President Trump facing new charges in the case accusing him of illegally possessing classified documents. Up next, how Trump is responding to the accusations so far. And San Antonio police say a shooting ends with a six-year-old child and a man in the hospital. Up next, who officers are looking for this morning and the car that the suspects got away in. Ahead on GMSA at 6 today, if you're planning a road trip this weekend, plan for higher gas prices. We'll look at why and how much it's gone up. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over here at flashing lights at Loop 410 in New Braunfels. I'm going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, former President Donald Trump facing new charges. Up next, how Trump is defending claims that he asked a staffer to delete camera footage at his Florida estate in an effort to obstruct a federal investigation. Let's look out there with a live cam this Friday morning. Uh, the good news, like Mark said earlier, it's Friday and it's 78 degrees right now. And a good morning to you. We made it to Friday. It is July 28th. That's right. Happy Friday. Uh, iced coffee again, especially later in the day. Um, that's what I'm finding that I'm doing. I'm staying away from the warm coffee at this point. Understood. Mm -hmm. Mike Osterhage, how's our weekend looking? Uh, hot. <laughs> <laughs> hot and sunny. A little bit of the Saharan dust hanging around here throughout the not decent chunk of the weekend. Right now we are starting off at 79 degrees and that bottom number is at 72. So there's enough humidity to uh, to notice it when you step outside. It feels like uh, 82 degrees right now. Uh, the hum excuse me, the high temperature today is going to be 100. I'm going for 100. It's going to be a real close call. There's just a, a little kind of a disturbance moving in here from the Gulf. It's not going to do anything that you notice, but it may. It's going to be, like I said, just uh, tough to hit 100 today. And then as far as the uh, aquifer, it, uh, well, continues to go in the, the wrong direction, but only at down one-tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours and moles moderate pigweed is on the uh, the low side. So as far as the heat index right now around the area feels like 82 as I mentioned here in town 83 up the road at Canyon Lake and uh, 80 in Castorville otherwise low to mid 70s in portions of the uh, the hill country. So warm and humid this morning. 
what you would expect. We've got clear skies right now. We'll see a few of the clouds developing right around sunrise. Like I said, I'm going for 100 today. There are going to be a lot of them in your backyard. Mostly sunny skies. Kind of a, a tough call. It's the same thing tomorrow. Then we get into Sunday and plenty of sunshine around here and it is going to get even hotter. We'll add a couple of degrees to the high temperatures and then that's going to be the situation to start off the work week. Monday and Tuesday, end of July, start off August and and stay in the low hundreds, very hot temperatures going into the first few days of August and even the first weekend of August. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. There was a big problem out there. Is yeah. that cleared up now? It cleared up, Mike. You know, our Friday morning commute has started off with some bumps in the road. Let's get a wider look here at Transguide. Now, this is 410 at New Braunfels. This is the shot that we showed you as we went to commercial break. You notice that we have two vehicles, and at this time, Texas has reported this as a stalled vehicle. Could be two stalled vehicles there in the eastbound lanes as you approach New Braunfels. Uh, very dark this morning, so just watch out. I've not spotted any text dot crews out there just yet or hero trucks. I should say working to assist those drivers, so be on the lookout if you are heading eastbound along loop 410. But as Mike mentioned, we did have some problems here along US 90. If you were heading eastbound right around Zazamora, the shot was at couples road and you saw that there were plenty of flashing lights out there. We sent a push alert out early this morning. You may have received it again. That crash has cleared out, so we're going to go ahead and clear that from our map in the next few moments, but the overall view does show uh, right now our morning commute isn't too bad, but we have had a few bumps in the road. As I mentioned, along with US 90, there was another crash reported around 410 at Crossroads. I actually drove by that this morning. That has also cleared out, but it looked like it may have involved two vehicles. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Everyone is doing OK out there. We still have that same closure guys along I 10 heading westbound. If you're going to exit 561, that's Medical Driver Worsbach Road. I did send saws an email yesterday, so I'm hoping to get some updates as to when that's going to reopen. But the lane should be open for you if you are heading northbound along 37 northbound from Pleasanton, pardon me, to the downtown area. We have a 30 minute commute at this hour, 30 along US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castroville and the arrival from Lytle should be in about 18 minutes or so. A little bit of a fuzzy shot there from Transcott at 410 at New Braunfels. We'll have more updates for you, including a full closure ahead for your weekend commute. Where that's at, I'll tell you in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, sir. Late breaking news. San Antonio police are at the scene of a shooting. It's happening on the city's south side. This is in the 100 block of Spats and Katrina Weber is live there with the very latest. Good morning, Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, police are still trying to gather information. They have very little at this point, but they do know that a man was shot here outside his home in the 100 block of Spats. They have this area blocked off right now. They say they have found evidence uh, in this area, it's a pretty wide area, almost the whole block that they have uh, cordoned off. And they say there is evidence in the middle of this. The man was at his home. I don't know how well you can see, but there's a white fence around it. He says uh, about 345 this morning, someone who he doesn't know shot him and he doesn't know why he was shot. Police say he suffered a, a gunshot wound in each leg. He was rushed to a hospital for treatment, but they do expect him to pull through. As far as who shot him, that's the big question mark here this morning. Police have uh, really no evidence or no information about who the shooter was other than he was someone who jumped into a car and then took up after this happened. Uh, again, a full investigation going on here right now. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, keep us posted. Thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a drive by shooting. It happened around midnight at an apartment complex in the 800 block of Mid Crown Drive. Police say the victim, a man in his 20s, was taken to the hospital after he was shot in the arm. Investigators also found several bullet casings in front of the apartments. So far, police say witnesses are not cooperating and the shooting suspect or suspects got away in a blue colored car. San Antonio police say a shooting involving four suspects near the pool area of an apartment complex left a six year old child and a man in the hospital. That incident happened just before 8 p.m. last night in the 5800 block of Medina based road. This is on the city's southwest side. Police say that child was inside the pool area and the 23 year old man was outside of the pool area fencing when they were hit by that gunfire. The victims are not related and were hit by the gunfire in their lower legs. Their injuries were deemed non life threatening there, but they were still taken to the hospital. A building next to the pool and a vehicle were also hit by the small caliber bullets. 
four suspects took off from that scene in a red Mercedes with tinted windows and silver lining on it. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg joining President Biden to announce new federal actions to protect workers and communities dealing with extreme heat. Nierenberg and the president were also joined by the mayor of Phoenix, Arizona, another city experiencing record-breaking heat this summer. The president announced he's asked the Labor Department to issue the first ever hazard alert for heat and ramp up protections for workers. It's something Mayor Nierenberg says San Antonio's already doing. We're going to do everything possible to protect uh, our most vulnerable workers, especially those outdoor workers, uh, for basic things like being able to access water breaks. The government also unveiled a new website. It's called heat.gov. You can go there to get information on how to cope with heat waves and other hot weather problems. Now to new charges against former President Trump and the special counsel's classified records investigation. The additional criminal counts stem from allegations that Trump tried to have grand jury requested surveillance video from his home deleted. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, the former president is attacking the new charges as harassment. This morning, two new criminal counts against former President Trump in the special counsel's probe into his alleged mishandling of classified records and alleged efforts to block the government's attempts to get them back. Special counsel Jack Smith filing two more counts in a superseding indictment, including one more count of willful retention of national defense information, plus another obstruction of justice count. Trump already faced 37 criminal counts in the special counsel's initial indictment in June and pleaded not guilty to all charges. This latest indictment also charging the head of maintenance at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, Carlos de Oliveira, for allegedly making false statements to the FBI. Federal prosecutors allege Trump directed de Oliveira to erase surveillance video from Mar-a-Lago that the grand jury requested by subpoena. According to this indictment, de Oliveira tells Trump employee four, we don't know who that is, that the boss wanted the server deleted. The superseding indictment also charges Trump with possessing a classified document in an audio recording now used as evidence. Kylie confidential yeah. secret. <laughs> this is secret information. Trump, who denies any wrongdoing, telling ABC News at the time, it's bravado if you want to know the truth. In an overnight interview with Fox, Trump accused the Justice Department of harassment. That reaction coming after his lawyers met with members of the special counsel as Trump faces another potential indictment in a separate investigation into his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Trump posting about that special counsel meeting on social media, calling it productive and saying another indictment would only further destroy the country. The Oliveria is due in court Monday. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And the time now is 510 and 78 degrees for now. This is interesting. A new report is accusing Tesla of installing software designed to overestimate the driving range displayed to drivers. Up next, how Tesla has been dodging complaints. Look out there with live cam. Enjoy this 78 degrees. We are expecting those triple digits over the weekend once again. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect come the month of August. We'll be right back. Local high school students are learning how to create opportunities for themselves in order to become successful entrepreneurs. More than a dozen students were part of the High School Entrepreneurship and Innovation Academy at St. Mary's High School this week. They learned that you don't need money to be an entrepreneur, only a lot of good ideas and creative ways to make opportunities to see them through. At St. Mary's University, a St. Mary's University associate professor teaches the one week free workshop. He says success comes with failure and the willingness to find a new idea. So it's all about opportunity recognition. It's about practicing your creativity. It's about problem solving. It's about problem seeking. You just want a lot of ideas. And then once you have an idea and you find out who and how that might get distributed to a customer, who wants to buy that idea, then you start working into it and finding ways to turn that idea into a profitable business. Students say the workshop was eye-opening and they discovered there are a lot of opportunities for them in business. Time check, 515, 78 degrees. Up next, Spotify talks about the launch of Billions Club, the series. Check a trans guide. We're tracking this incident. It looks like police are now on the scene. 410 New Braunfels area. Steven is watching it too. 
from the traffic lab. Is that what we call it? The traffic center, traffic lab? Okay, right. Stevens Place, whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> we'll be right back. He was only 47. Aneurysm. Did he have life insurance? Do you? No. You gotta get on it. Check out Select Quote. Trust me, the peace of mind, it's worth it. Come on down. Life insurance is too important to put off another day. That's why Select Quote makes getting coverage you need easy for less than a dollar a day. Now get up to a $2 million policy with no medical exam and same day coverage. Visit SelectQuote.com. We shop, you save. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed for a more productive day. Zizol works faster than Claritin, and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Bug spray works best when your family actually wears it. Get odor-free 8-hour protection from mosquitoes and ticks without the ick. Zevo on-body repellent. People love it. Bugs hate it. Hey, welcome back. It's 519 and happy Friday. <laughs> happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> happy Friday. Well, guys, guess what? Uh, we have an update to that situation that's been going on at I-10 at Callahan. Yeah. Oh. We've had that closure there for now four days. Uh, you know, I was going through some of my emails and saws did get back to me yesterday. They say this water main break was caused uh, likely due to hot or dry weather that caused yeah. the ground to shift, which is usually wow. what happens, right? But they still have some paving work to do, which is why they have the closure out there. So we can expect that again today, but uh, just be on the lookout for that. We will watch it closely. Once it reopens, we will let you know. Okay. I can imagine but, trying to fix a 16 inch water pipe is a little bit different than getting one of those little shark bites at the uh, hardware right. store. Oh, it's not an, on a I, pipe. <laughs> I don't imagine it's an easy job. A lot of paving work that they have to do, especially if the ground shifted. Uh, but you know, we've also been keeping a very close eye here at 410 at New Braunfels. This is the site of where we had at least two stall vehicles. Um, looks like again, a little close up shot from our friends at Transguide. They try to give us a shot of all the conditions and the way traffic's looking out there. So we'll watch it closely. But if you were heading eastbound, just be on the lookout of 410 as you approach New Braunfels. We take a look here at that closure again. I-10 westbound exit 561. You know about it. We've been talking about it all week. We will watch it closely. And again, once it reopens, I will let you know. We'll send that push alert out to you. Giving you a wide look of the map, though, there are more closures to look forward to. And this full weekend closure is going to last all the way up until Monday, folks. We're talking about that North Expansion Project. Bridge demolition will pick up tonight at 9 in the evening. Should wrap at 5 in the morning, but it takes us all the way to the next work week, July 31st. What we'll see during that time are the westbound main lane full closures from the Blanco Road exit ramp to the Blanco Road entrance ramp. And again, that is a full weekend closure. So meaning those barrels will be out there all weekend long. Watch out for those crews. No, it's a lot of information, but scan the QR code because that takes you to our traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures happening this weekend. Know what to expect before you have to hit the roads. And I know a lot of those textile crews are trying to beat that heat, Mike. Cindy, and it's coming down the screen, and there's no relief really inside. All right, beautiful picture from Woodlawn Lake. Three ducks managed to get their five seconds of fame and added to the uh, the beautiful picture out there and yeah that's a lot of saharan dust in that sunset that nice orangey glow and that's going to be uh, sticking around for about the next uh, 24 to 36 hours in through today in through tomorrow then it's going to start to kind of uh, thin out a little bit as we go into late tomorrow night and then finally get on out of the picture once we get into sunday around here so we've got a lot of clear skies right now and then we'll see a few of those clouds a few flashing lights by the way they're on uh, eastbound 410 right around just about at broadway so just uh, Stephen's going to check into that right now, but uh, we'll have a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. Then they'll develop and then get on out. Plenty of sunshine throughout the day. Make it up through the 80s, about the same temperature profile as yesterday. I'm going for 100 today. It's going to be a real close call whether actually hit that tick of 100. Some uh, factors upstairs in the atmosphere, which may try and keep us from hitting that, but it's going to feel like it no matter what we will though obviously have the humidity drop down at, throughout the course of the day now this may be this com one computer model may be pushing things as far as getting it down into the lower 50s yesterday we stayed right around mid and upper 50s for dew points but when you get down below that 60 degree line at least it's a bit more comfortable in the shade so again i keep saying that's the one 
positive takeaway we have from all this as far as the humidity dropping down in the afternoons. Quick check on the tropics in the uh, western Atlantic. There's nothing going on out there. And yeah, Hurricane Center still has an eye on this little cluster of clouds right there. But doesn't even think it's going to be doing any developing in the next uh, three to five days. Triple digits all the way through the end of the month. And as a matter of fact, it's going to be heating up somewhat. So 100 today, tomorrow, 102 Sunday, and then 103s to finish up July, start off the month of August. And if there is a subtle pattern change by maybe next weekend, I mean, this is the only the only hope, the only thing you can kind of, you know, grasp at straws, trying to find something that would bring bring about a bit of a change by next weekend and hopefully a shower too. But other than that, nothing substantial. Well, remember, we got lucky last Sunday. That materialized and yeah. turned out. That was so you, super you nice. never know. Yeah, it, again, that, that high that's kind of plaguing us, just as it starts to move around a little bit, you can get some subtle changes here. But mm -hmm. that's all we can wish for right now. Well, we hope so because mm -hmm. August could be tough. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mike. 524, 78 degrees. Up next, a first look at the new trailer for the new NASA Plus streaming service. In today's Tech Bytes, Tesla under fire. A new report claims the company installed software specifically designed to overestimate driving ranges displayed to drivers. Tesla is also accused of forming a diversion team to cancel service calls related to range complaints. Tesla has not commented on the report. A Billions Club is coming to Spotify. Bad Bunny, Post Malone, and Billie Eilish kick off the video series. It gives stars the chance to choose how they celebrate one of their songs hitting one billion streams. It's an offshoot of the playlist launched in 2020. NASA is about to launch its own streaming service, and it won't cost anything. In addition to live events already offered on its website, NASA Plus will feature original video series available on most platforms. One more upside, all content will be ad-free. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 528, 78 degrees. Saving money during a time of inflation is a tough chore, and just ahead, some of the small steps you can take now, they can pay off big later. And coming up at six, hotter temps means it's harder to keep up with your backyard or garden. Sarah Costa joins us with how to keep everything alive. Making headlines this morning, some military nominations have been placed on pause. Up next, why they may not be resolved before lawmakers go on leave next month. And let's look out there with live cam this Friday morning. Um, I'd suggest you get your outdoor activities done early or maybe late in the evening if you can, because it's going to be hot again. Mm. Good morning, everybody. Friday, the 28th. Thanks. of July. Thank you for joining us. Uh, looking forward to the weekend. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah, just not really the heat. I right? mean, I've been staying inside these last few days. It's not been bad. Although, you know, keep saying the one positive is at least we get the humidity to drop down somewhat in the afternoon. That would yeah, be great. If you have to cut the grass, do it uh, earlier in the morning, not too early to wake up your neighbors, of course. Uh, <laughs> although I don't know who would need to cut the grass right now just because mine is just brown out there so just I'm gonna leave it alone anyway we've got a uh, lot of clear skies as of right now season's so gonna talk about uh, those flashing lights there on 410 westbound just excuse me eastbound in just a couple of moments 79 degrees two point at 72 which means enough humidity that you will uh, you'll notice it when you step outside this morning southerly wind at nine miles per hour heat index readings 83 Canyon Lake 80 Castro 82 here in town otherwise Mid 70s on average mold is on the moderate side. It did go up a little bit from the previous day's reading and uh, throughout the rest of today. We'll have some of those morning clouds around here through the 80s. Plenty of sunshine 91 at noon and it's going to be a real close call today as far as hitting 100. Still forecasting 100 degrees. It'll feel every bit like that. And of course, in your backyard, it may well be as well. Last weekend of July, if you can believe School's right around the corner. Month of August, yeah, starts on Tuesday, and it's going to be hot, actually even hotter than what we've had the past couple of days. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest? 
No, Mike, those flashing lights that we saw on live ca cam, we have a closer shot here at TransGuy. These, that's that stall vehicle that I mentioned earlier. This is in the eastbound lanes, as you mentioned, heading uh, along Loop 410 if you approach New Braunfels. We do have those uh, Texot Hero trucks out there, but it does look like this may involve more than one vehicle. At this time, Texot has this listed again as a stall in the area, but just watch out. If something updates, we'll be sure to update you. Good news is, folks, we're not seeing any slowdowns in those eastbound lanes. Things still seem to be in the green if you are heading in that direction. Direction. Just watch out for those Texas Hero trucks and drivers that may be out there as well. Giving you a wide look though at our metropolitan area, the story really has been some of those closures that we've been talking about all week. Of course, I-10 heading westbound and exit 561 has been a big talking point due to that water main break. But as we learn more information, we'll be sure to let you know once that reopens. Heading into town, well, I-10 heading westbound or eastbound, I should say, it shouldn't be too bad if you're heading in from Bernie. 25 minutes at this hour. Same goes for 281 southbound traveling in from Bulverde to the downtown area, and it's not too awful. If you're traveling along I-35 southbound from New Braunfels, we can expect a 27 minute commute. All right, let's get it back here at Transguide. Again, the salt vehicle our salt vehicles, I should say, reported at 410 at New Braunfels heading eastbound. We'll keep a close eye on this and I'll have an update for you coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Late breaking news. Part of a southwest side neighborhood has become a crime scene. San Antonio police are working there trying to find out more about a shooting. This happened in the 100 block of spots off of Palo Alto Road and Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, you mentioned that the victim says he was shot by a stranger. Well, that's what he told police that he didn't know who shot him or why. Uh, that victim is a man in his early 30s. He was right outside his house right here in the 100 block of spots about 345 this morning when he says someone shot him. And again, he doesn't know what led to this. Police are uh, here. You can see them going around looking for evidence going around his house right there in the front. Uh, they said they also found some evidence here along the street and they have pretty much the whole block uh, roped off here uh, where they have collected items they believe or possibly related to the shooting. Now, as far as who shot him, again, no word of no real word on that. Police say there was one person, maybe two, who jumped into a car and took off right after this happened. The victim shot in both legs, was taken to a hospital, and police say he should be okay. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, the Senate is in a stalemate over promotions for hundreds of top U.S. military officials. At the center of the standoff, Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, Republican is getting criticized by members of both parties, but he says he's not backing down. Congress is approaching its August recess, and there's a chance lawmakers will be out of Washington, D.C. before resolving an ongoing hold on military nominations. We're seeing how uh, military lives are being put on hold and how they're being treated, and it's, it's very discouraging. Military nominations have been placed on pause by Republican Senator and former college football coach Tommy Tuberville, who was against the Pentagon's policy of reimbursing military service members and their families for travel to obtain abortion care. It alarms me that we can't come to a conclusion and nobody's talking to me. I mean, you can't change your mind. Defense Secretary reached out to you. Huh? Defense Secretary reached out to you. Yeah, for a few minutes. Earlier this week, a group of Democratic senators on the Senate Armed Services Committee wrote to Minority Leader Mitch McConnell to squash Tuberville's blockade. But when the two met on Thursday... Nothing's changed. However, President Joe Biden says change is needed. It's time for service members to receive the pay and promotions they've earned and deserve. It's time for the Senate of Alabama to let these generals and admirals fully serve their country and service members care for themselves and their families. On Thursday night, the Senate passed the National Defense Authorization Act in a bipartisan fashion, with Majority Leader Chuck Schumer saying the Tuberville situation is up to Republican leadership. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Trouble in the Caribbean. All non-emergency U.S. personnel have been ordered to leave Haiti. The order follows a U.S. Embassy travel advisory urging Americans to leave the country immediately due to recent armed clashes between criminal groups and police in Port-au-Prince. The State Department issued a statement warning of a high threat of violent crime and kidnapping throughout the city. Authorities say the ability to provide emergency services to U.S. citizens in Haiti is severely constrained.
A critical hearing resumes today in Michigan in a courtroom there for Ethan Crumbly, the 17 year old boy who killed four people inside his high school back in 2021. Now, a judge is hearing arguments over whether Crumbly should spend the rest of his life in prison. During the hearing yesterday, prosecutors introduced a journal entries, video and testimony from a wounded staff member who dropped to the floor to block her door. Crumbly has pleaded guilty to murder, terrorism and other crimes. Military recruiting shortages are creating some serious challenges for the Pentagon. That's because recruiters for all branches of service are now forced to draw from a shrinking pool of candidates. The percentage of Americans ages 19 through 25 is at a 15 year low. Adding to the problem, low unemployment and more job opportunities for younger people. Some who might otherwise go into uniform are not only seeing more attractive alternatives, but also rising wages. According to the Pentagon, fewer than a quarter of Americans ages 17 to 24 even qualify for military service. That's because of poor test scores, criminal records, and physical and mental fitness issues. And only 10% of possible candidates now say they would even consider military service here in the U.S. Time now is 539 and 78 degrees. While inflation may be cooling, many Americans say they're not feeling the savings just yet. Up next, a bank rate financial expert shows us some of the best ways to achieve financial freedom. And no cooling off here in San Antonio. We're at 78 degrees for now and things will heat up this afternoon. Also over the weekend, but we're going to be checking in with Mike for any kind of glimmer of hope way off into the future. We'll be right back. 542, now to your money. While inflation is cooling, many Americans say they are not feeling anything different financially. ABC's Morgan Norwood has some ways to get a better hold of your budget. From sky high inflation to the rising interest rates, the economy has taken a wrecking ball to the financial goals of millions of Americans. As much as we don't like recessions, as much as we uh, fear job loss, that's not something that we can have any effect over, but we can respond to how our finances recover from them or how we handle our finances in the midst of those uh, challenges. And while there's a growing consensus that the U.S. will avoid a recession, many Americans worry that financial freedom still isn't attainable. But Sarah Foster with Bankrate says it is possible. You just have to start small. Prioritize even putting just a couple hundred or even it can be $50 a month back into an investment account or a retirement account. It's really all about starting where you can and meeting your finances where you are able to afford and working around that. But before you invest, inspect your debt. Really look at your debts as far as if you have credit card, uh, high interest rate debt, that could be something that's really powerful to at least address first because you know, you could be saving hundreds, if not thousands of dollars just by eliminating that balance. And if you're lucky enough to have gotten a raise this year, resist the urge to splurge by upgrading your lifestyle. A lot of times we can go overboard by spending the money uh, kind of out front and automatically increasing our expenses. And then that kind of prevents you from even reaping the benefits of that raise. Bottom line, at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about the income you have coming in, but the choices that you make about how to manage that money. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. 544, 78 degrees. Let's look out there with TransGuy, looking over here at the situation at Loop 410 at New Braunfels Avenue and also at Highway 281 at Hildebrand. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Highway 90 looks good so far, though. Just about 548, a local nonprofit is helping teach people CPR, and they're doing it for free. The likelihood of someone needing CPR is going to be someone you love. Jennifer Shreve works for the Miss Tristan Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to teach people about water safety and CPR. Through their nonprofit, they offer free CPR classes to anyone in our area. We offer these services to people who just want to learn the skills, be prepared in the result of a tragic event or an emergency. It is important to note that taking this class does not make you CPR certified. You can learn how to uh, by getting a book to a class by heading up to our website at KSAT.com. Time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. That's right. How's it looking, Stephen? 
Apple over here in Steven's place, right? <laughs> uh, you know, guys, things have been looking good. I've been keeping a close eye on these TransGuide cameras, but things are picking up there along US 90 eastbound and westbound. There at 281, if you're headed to the airport, looks like we have a little bit more traffic out there as folks are getting ready to drive off to the, into the weekend, but destinations unknown. As we get a look there at 10 at Callahan East or West, I should say, you can see traffic is moving, but we still have some issues out there. There's a stall vehicle that was reported along 410 eastbound at New Braunfels Avenue. Now, at least one of those vehicles has cleared out. Remember, there was at least two involved, so I still see one out there from the TransGuide camera shot. Be on the lookout. Their emergency lights are on, so if you travel through those eastbound lanes, move over or slow down. As I mentioned, the big story of the morning has been a lot of the closures that we've been seeing over the week, but that same trend does continue into the weekend. So here's what else is happening along Loop 1604 with that bridge demolition. Remember, this is part of the North Expansion Project. I talked about the westbound lanes, but we will now see the eastbound lanes also uh, have a full closure. This is actually going to be from Bitters Road exit ramp to the Blanco Road entrance ramp. And remember, this is going to take place tonight around 9 in the evening and fingers crossed it'll wrap around 5 in the morning. But that takes us all the way to the new work week, Monday, July 31st, the last day of July. And again, we will see that full weekend closure, which means those barriers will be in place throughout the remainder of the project. But as we give you one last look around town, no closures there at 98 couples, although there was a pretty serious crash there earlier. Uh, our Friday morning commute's not been bad, but a few bumps in the road as we get things moving. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you know, bad. back to that, that story about learning CPR. Remember yes. when we had the CPR in the first aid classes here a couple of years ago, and so much changes all the time. I said, well, when yeah. I learned first aid back in, you know, Boy Scouts, and like, no, 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 no. Everything, they continue to update oh, that. Wow. So even if you've learned it, there may be something new to learn. Oh, so, absolutely. It yeah. changes pretty frequently. Yes. Yeah. We even had somebody recently that, this that year. showed us something new. Earlier yeah. this year. On GMSA so. at 9, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So, great, great thing to do. All right. Look at this. Aww. Oh. Is that just a picture? Good oh. summer memories. Yes. <laughs> Look at those two just having a, not a care in the world. Wouldn't it be nice to be those kids? Just not, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just nothing but just splashing around on a splash pad there. Lena and Briella cooling off on the splash pad. Oh, it's going to be a great picture of those two. Look at that in about, what, 20 years or so. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, July temperatures, 20 days so far, triple digits. And again, only one day has the average temperature, the low and the high combined, been at average. And that was back on the 7th. We did have a little bit of rain back then, and that kept uh, temperatures down. I believe the high on that day was 92 degrees. But yeah, we've had those triple digits, and we're going to continue to rack up the uh, triple digits. And the hottest day, of course, 106 almost five degrees above the average overall up to this point. We got a lot of clear skies starting off right now. And uh, yesterday we did hit 100. Kind of kind of tough to do. And that's going to be the situation again today. It's going to be a real close call about hitting 100. I'm forecasting 100 degrees. Of course, there will be a lot of upper 90s around the area today. And again, got to emphasize that's in the shade in the direct sun. It feels even hotter than that. Now we're not going to have a lot of a heat index to deal with just because the humidity will be dropping down. Unlike the situation right now, we do have somewhat of that uh, that heat index. So in the shade, it's a little more tolerable and it's one of the situations where if you are in a pool or in the splash pad and then get out of the water, you will your body will be able to cool itself a little bit more efficiently when we had these lower dew points in the afternoon. So it'll be more refreshing. High is the dominant feature. That thing just is not going to be moving. There's the easterly wave that we've been talking about all week long and initially it looked like it might give us something as far as uh, a shower or something like that but it's really not going to what this is going to do and this is why with this little wave coming in here it's kind of messing with um, the, the atmosphere upstairs and so that's why it's going to be a little tougher to hit 100 today but it's going to feel every bit like it and then we just get into tomorrow and the weekend and actually the high is going to start to strengthen a little bit more going into the first part of the week starting off the month of august on tuesday and that thing moves in the only hope really as of right now is as it sets up shop just to the north of us that we could get a flow coming in here off of the gulf of mexico perhaps by 
late next week, next weekend. But again, right now, that's sort of a wishful thinking. Like I said, I'm going for 100 today. It'll be a, it'll be a tough call. And then triple digits tomorrow, even heating up more on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 103s, those two days, and uh, low hundreds to uh, go into the first couple of days of August. Right, but on the 103 days, what about the humidity? No, we will have the lower humidity okay. in the afternoon. So yeah, that, that's going to be, again, the one plus side. But it, it comes in here, obviously, in the morning. So still just hot. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Time right now, 554, 77 degrees. Let's look at your winning lot of numbers. Pick 3, 8, 9, 3, Fireball 1, Daily 4, 2, 1, 9, 1, Fireball 9. Your cash five numbers, 4, 15, 23, 24, 35. Texas two-step, 6, 20, 33, 35. The bonus ball, 34. Mega tonight, 910 million. Powerball tomorrow night, $60 million. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest on the story that we know you've been covering, the new charges against former President Trump in the classified docu documents case. Our team is gonna break it down and tell us what comes next. Also, it's all about that heat. It is finally spreading into areas that have barely seen summer. The excessive heat warnings all the way from Kansas City over to Baltimore. We've got a lot to talk about when it comes to heat and when it breaks, right here on GMA. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA, a boy fighting for his life after being attacked by his own dogs at home. What we've learned overnight about the case. Up next, gardening with KSAT is back. How you can keep everything alive in your backyard or garden without using up your neighborhood's water supply. And checking Trans Guide, looking live at 410 at Ingram. Friday morning commute is off and running. We still have construction over there near 281 in Hildebrand.